Welcome to Fighting for the Face Dumpster Fire for the third week of March 2018. If you've ever heard of the owl anointing or you've done the wave at church, go go ahead and hit the subscribe button below. All right, let's take a look at the stuff that didn't quite make the cut for the uh, Fighting for the Faith uh, podcast this week. And um, yeah, I just hope you're sitting down. We're just going to get right to it. Brace yourself. This could be a shock. Are you ready? Okay, here we go. <laughs> this is Kathy Walters, or Wal- Walters, Kathy Walters. And uh, Kathy is going to explain to us about how she, <laughs> she received God's owl anointing. Yeah, I'm not making that up. That's the name of the video, by the way. Here we go. Well, good morning, everybody. Morning. I'm actually waiting to do a video with Teresa Phillips from Chicago, and we're going to be talking about angels, so um, you can check out her website for that. Um, unless you can see it at uh, 12 o'clock my time, Eastern time. But while I was waiting, I want to tell you a story, because uh, I've been talking about the owls at different conferences, and really I got this from Chris Vallotton. All right, so Chris Vallotton gave you this teaching that we're about to hear from you, a, a true story that occurred to you regarding owls. <laughs> well, at least now we know who, <clears throat> pun intended. I'm dying inside. started when I was in England at a conference, and in the middle of the conversation, I started laughing. I couldn't speak at all. I laughed and laughed. And the only word that would come out of my mouth was owl. So I owl. That's the only word that came out of your mouth was owl. There for about 10 minutes, I said, owl, owl. I didn't understand it. And the con- Yeah, neither do I. <laughs> Yeah, it's weird. Hurried on, and when I got home, somebody said, you need to listen to Chris Vallotton's teaching on YouTube about owls, so I did is so. Chris Vallotton has an actual teaching on owls. Awesome. You know, it's about um, owls can see in the dark. <laughs> yeah, yeah, they can't. <laughs> owls can see in the dark. <laughs> Why should we believe that... God gave you an owl anointing because Chris Vallotton said that owls can see in the dark. Um, they can see a long way. They, I think their heads can turn completely around to see it all the way around. And right, yeah. So can... <laughs> I've seen heads turn around before, you know, at least in the movies, portraying people who are demonically possessed. <clears throat> now, a little bit of a note here. I mean... Kathy Walters thinks that there's some kind of God's owl anointing, you know, because Chris Vallotton, you know, says that they can see a long way, they can see in the dark and spin their heads around. <laughs> Woo! Yeah, can't wait to get that owl. No, I can't. I don't want that owl anointing. Let me explain why. In Daniel chapter 4, there's an actual epistle, a letter that's written to all of us, and it's written by none other than Nebuchadnezzar. And he describes in detail how God gave him a vision warning him that he was going to punish him uh, for his pride and his arrogance. And one of the details about how God punished him is quite fascinating. So for context sake, we'll take a look at this. Daniel 4.13, I saw in the visions of my head as I lay in my bed, behold, a watcher, a holy one, came down from heaven. He proclaimed aloud and said thus, Chop down the tree, lop off its branches, strip off its leaves, scatter its fruit, let the beasts flee from under it and birds from its branches, but leave the stump of its roots in the earth bound with a band of iron and bronze amid the tender grass of the field. Let him be wet with the dew of heaven, let his portion be with the uh, beasts in the grass of the earth. And here we go, let his mind be changed from a man's and let a beast's mind be given to him. Mm-hmm. Yeah, um, and God followed through on this and ended up giving Nebuchadnezzar for a brief time uh, the mind of a beast. That was not a blessing 
that was a curse. It was a punishment of God against Nebuchadnezzar for his pride. So um, here, uh, poor Kathy Walters uh, thinks that being given the mind of an owl, which I think is less than a beast, it's an unclean bird of prey, uh, is somehow a blessing because, you know, owls can turn their heads around and can see far and stuff and see in the dark. Yeah, I think you kind of see why this didn't exactly make the cut. Okay, so uh, in the opening portion of our dumpster fire for this week, I asked the question if you've ever, you know, done the wave at church that you go ahead and hit the subscribe button. And uh, here's the uh, reason why uh, we're heading over to the Faith Church St. Louis. Nicole Crank still cannot afford pants without holes in them. Watch what she does at the opening of this um, sermon titled, See and Say. Did your babies have this toy? So TV department, I'll stand real still so you can see this. You don't have to be scared. Do you guys? Yeah, it's a see and say, all right, yeah. What this is called? Yeah, again, what, what is with these pants? See and say. Mm. They had more coffee than y'all did. <laughs> A sea <laughs> It was a wave. You know what? I'm in a weird mood. Let's do a wave. <laughs> Who's up for it? Dude, you got the best barrels ever, dude. Just like you pull in and you just get spit right out of them. And you just drop in and just smack the lip. Yeah. All right, ready? We're going to start on this side because you started first. See, I told you I was going to stand still and then I... Why are you doing a wave? <laughs> Ready? On your mark. Why are we doing this? I don't know, because it's church. That is precisely why you shouldn't do it. And Jesus is full of joy. <laughs> so because Jesus is full of joy, we need to do the wave at church. Wow. Yeah, uh, that's some... Um, Pretty wicked logic there, yeah. And love and peace. Yeah, love, peace, patience, kindness, entertainment, and lack of self-control. These are all fruits of the Spirit one way or another. And some of us are just taking life too seriously. So on the count of three, and don't be one of those duds who's all like, I'm not doing this because it's church. No, you're going to do it too, ready? Even if you don't stand up, you just do the arms. All right. So it's compulsory. This Absolutely mandatory that you uh, do the wave there at church, led by Nicole Crank. And but but if you're into it, stand up. <laughs> I, I'm gonna run across the stage in heels. At least you can stand up. Yeah. <laughs> 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 drop down, snap, ah, and then after that. You just drop in, just ride the barrel and get pitted, so pitted like that. Yeah, this makes no sense. You know, unless your knee hurts or something, then we got you. Right. If you have a doctor's note, you can get out of this. Ready on your mark. Get set. I hope the boom shot is ready to capture this crowd because this is going to be crazy. Don't you love all these false starts? <laughs> on your mark. I'm waiting for that boom shot to show up. Get set. Come on, boom shot. There we go. Go! Let's go! Come on! Whoa! And that's how we do church! No. <laughs> yeah, you're going to note that uh, in the radical informality that has taken over p buildings that call themselves churches, at least somehow loosely related to Jesus, that there is no concept of holiness or what it is that the church gathers to do. Uh, I happen to have a biblical text I would like to consider in this matter. Uh, Acts chapter 2, Acts chapter 2, the day of Pentecost, right after the day of Pentecost, and all those thousands of people were brought to penitent faith in Christ, baptized in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit for the forgiveness of their sins. They've received the Holy Spirit. And here's what it says about this brand new megachurch yeah, that was there in Jerusalem after the day of Pentecost. It says, and they devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching, the fellowship, the breaking of bread, and the prayers. Mm -hmm. Devoted to the apostles' teaching. Where do we find the apostles' teaching today? The answer, the written word of God. This is the only place you can find the apostles' teaching. 
Fellowship, breaking of bread, is referring to the Lord's Supper and prayer. Mm -hmm. And you'll note that the fledgling very first megachurch there in Jerusalem after the day of Pentecost, they entertainment was not on their list, doing the wave or... You know, the Apostle Peter didn't bring in circus jugglers and things like that. Well, because, you know, Jesus is all about joy. You know, it's, <laughs> it's just, okay, moving along. All right. Now, this guy, he's kind of got the mafioso thing going on there. Uh, love the silk in the uh, pocket, but... Uh, <laughs> could make heads or tails of this particular teaching. This was live streamed on you know Facebook Live or something like that. But uh, hope you're sitting down because I couldn't make heads or tails of this. Here's Bishop Brian Keith Williams. Here we go. Lord's Church, pastor of the Floating Church, welcome. Good to have everybody on today. This is the day God has made, and we're going to rejoice and be glad in it. I'm on my way to... Uh, another city going to preach and uh, be in a fellowship with believers on the morning. Uh, but we are going to talk to you first before we get to the airport, all right? So make sure you get others on. Hit the share button. Go from left to right on Apple. Hit those three buttons on Android. Today is going to be really powerful. A message that I have actually had in my spirit for four days. He's had this message in his spirit for four whole days. Oh, then, you know, this is going to be life-changing. I mean... Normally, you know, when guys have a message in their spirit, they pretty much get it out, you know, like a day or two, three at the most. But you've gone the distance four whole days. And I waited to deliver it. You know, we have to wait on the Lord. We have to wait on ministry. We have to ruminate, meditate, deliberate, contemplate. And as we do, we can find that it becomes a word that God impregnates. And when that word is in. Whoa. <laughs> Whoa. Whoa, 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 whoa. Yeah, um, uh, <laughs> yeah, I, I, I'm not wanting to be impregnated by anything. Uh, you know, being male, that's going to be weird. Um, and the only time I've ever seen a male impregnated with something is like from the movie Aliens, you know. So let me back this up just a smidge. Um, you sure God put this on your heart four days ago? We do we can find that it becomes a word that God impregnates. And when that word is impregnated, it brings forth. So this message today is filled with impregnation for your imagination. And if you can see it, you can be it. If you can see it, you can be it. Impregnation for your imagination. <laughs> My imagination is very nervous. You can say it, and if you can seize it, then you can have it. Because God, if you can say it, you can seize it and have it. <laughs> it's like blab it and grab it. Yeah, this is, sounds like the word of faith heresy. Said it, all right? And that's where we're going to come from today. We're going to talk to you about uh, when God changes your water into wine. As <laughs> when God changes my water into wine. What does that mean? You get on, hit the share button. They need you to get many people on as early and as soon as you can so they can enjoy the full strength of this broadcast. Right, and be impregnated while listening or watching it. When God uh, turns your water into wine, that's what we're going to talk about here in Jesus' name. And it is a prophetic word. Amen. We don't No, this is not a prophetic word. But what preceded, but what proceeded. So it's a prophetic word. It's from the mouth of God. It's from the throne. I'm confident of that. In Jesus' name, Father, we thank you and we praise you for this day that you've made. We ask your blessing to be upon these next few moments as we share the word of the Lord. Let it not fall to the ground. If you were to share the word of the Lord, you'd actually have to open up a Bible and teach it. And I'm 100% positive that the, uh, the account of Jesus changing the water into wine in John chapter 2 is not about my mind or my imagination being impregnated. Or that somehow the application is for me to watch for when God is changing my water into wine. Yeah. Wow. Let it not return void. We give you praise in advance in anticipation of your supernatural divine intervention. In Jesus' name, and all of God's anointed said amen and amen. Again, hit that share button. We're going to talk about when God turns or changes your water into wine. Amen. For a subject 
uh, subtopic I should say put on your screen put on your screen 15 signs of the wine put that on your screen what 15 signs of the wine Wow, you know, I've never heard a message like this before. Read my Bible through many times. Never saw that portion of Scripture that talked about the 15 signs that God has turned your water into wine. This is nuts. 15 signs of the wine. All right? Once you've done that, I'll know that you're on. Once you've done it, I'll know that you're on. If so apparently he's wanting them to type stuff into the chat box so he knows they're with him. He's tightly monitoring the comments there. Come on here trolling and saying anything crazy and negative. Some of you have already started. You will be blocked and you'll never be able to see us again. So you might not want to go there with me. And I'm not going to waste my time and clap back to you. So don't come on saying stupid stuff because you will be blocked forever till Jesus comes. There will be no second chance. <laughs> so whatever you do, don't troll this guy. And say stupid stuff like what you're saying makes no biblical sense because he's going to block you. And you won't even be able to see him again until Jesus comes. <laughs> Say stupid stuff so he blocks you so you never have to see him again. That'd be worth it. All right, uh, moving along here. Uh, you can see why this made the dumpster fire. And the rest of the message is just abysmal. The 15 <laughs> signs of the wine. It just makes no sense at all. All right, have you all seen the new uh, Hillsong music video? We're not going to play the music, but we're just going <laughs> to sample some of the images from this video i mean this is nightmare inducing this is the peace music video uh from hillsong young and free and you know you just kind of look at the human i mean seriously i mean if i wasn't if, if this wasn't a music video and you put your own music to it I, I'm thinking that something nightmarish, you know, from like The Exorcist or something would fit really well with these images, you know. So let's take a look. Oh, man, is that creepy. Okay, uh, let me fast forward just a smidge, see if it gets uncreeped. That looks like the, the creepy, scary lady from the Haunted Mansion at Disneyland. Um, okay, and uh, moving forward just a minute, let's see if we can... Are these like ring raids? What are these? <laughs> Seriously, I take the music off, watch the video, and it's like, you're going to have nightmares. This is crazy stuff. Let me fast forward just a little bit more here. Okay, and, and then at the very end, it gets really bizarre, like it's raining blood. Okay, that's all I could do with that one. Um, <laughs> okay, kind of move along. Okay, <clears throat> next segment, and uh, last one for this installment of Dumpster Fire. We're heading over to Sid Roth's It's Supernatural, and his guest, David Zadai. David Zadai, and... I mean, Sid Roth's It's Supernatural is a joke to begin with. I mean, literally, he is selling the most absurd merchandise with the most absurd, non-verifiable claims ever. And this, this kind of fits into that category. But this fellow literally is teaching stuff that the Bible doesn't teach at all, claiming that he got it via direct revelation after he died during a, a dental procedure. <laughs> Yeah, call Hermie from uh, from the Rudolph the Red Nose Reindeer. I mean, I mean, how many people do you know die during dental procedures? Oh, this won't hurt a bit. Now I looked it up, by the way. It it has been known to happen, and m most of the deaths that occur at the dentist are when small children are anesthetized. Is that the right way of saying it? But you know, it's so it's not a very common occurrence. But uh, let's let Sid Roth kind of set the program up. Here we go. Hello, Sid Roth here. Welcome to my world where it's naturally supernatural. My guest died 
went to heaven, but was sent back with revelation of the invisible world. Most bo- So he died, went to heaven, came back with revelation. It- if he came back with Revelation, we need to add this to the back of our Bibles. No joke. Oh, believers don't have a clue. Most non-believers don't have a clue. All the action is occurring that's causing all the things going on, good, bad, or, or whatever, in your life from the invisible world. He even had downloaded how to have every one of your prayers answered. And he- um. What? <laughs> um, are you saying that God doesn't hear and answer our prayers? There are some who are warned that their prayers would not be answered or that God would do it. You know, for instance, men who treat their wives harshly. What are you talking about? Interested in finding out? <laughs> no, actually, I'm not. So uh, let's fast forward through the opening of his program to the actual interview portion where it begins. Hello, I'm here with my friend Kevin Zadai, and Kevin was having a dental procedure. He died, he went. (laughs) He died having a dental procedure. I would like more of the details of that because, you know, I, back in the 90s, I watched ER. It was a great uh, drama that took place in an emergency room in Chicago. And, you know, I, I remember them, you know, having a crash cart and things like that for people who go into cardiac arrest. You know, I just, I've never seen those great, you know, life or death dental procedures depicted in, you know, <laughs> television dramas, you know. So it's just, this is weird. To heaven. Uh, you didn't want to come. See, that's not a dentist chair. That, that. Uh, <laughs> died while having a root canal um Heck. no said i did not i <laughs> flatline while having a root canal or something okay still, i still can't understand um how beautiful heaven is and how different it is to be down here it's so slow so he's one of these heavenly tourists that's right that, that's what we call this heavenly tourism people have been to heaven and back and stuff to uh, write about their um their experiences it's important to note that um that there is at least one notable person who had a book written about his claims that he died and went to heaven who basically said it wasn't true. Uh-huh. I just can't I just can't understand. Well, what do you mean so slow? This realm is is just working so slow cuz it's a fallen realm. And so once you experience the other realm, you don't want to come back. I mean, there's no way that you want to come back. And so he did send me back. He wanted me to to teach people about prayer and how it works. Mm. See, God, God Jesus sent this guy back because he he needed Kevin Zadai to teach us about prayer because God's word is not sufficient to teach us about prayer. Now, a little bit of a note here. If you take a look at uh, 2 Timothy chapter 3, the back part of that chapter, here's what you will see is uh, Paul writing to young Pastor Timothy, starting at verse 14. But as for you, continue in what you have learned how, and have firmly believed, knowing from whom you learned it, How from childhood you've been acquainted with the sacred writings, which are able to make you wise for salvation through faith in Christ Jesus. All Scripture is breathed out by God and profitable for teaching, for reproof, for correction, and for training in righteousness, so that the man of God may be complete, equipped for every good work. Mm -hmm. The written word of God. And by the way, I've noted this before. Scripture here is the is the word Greek word graphe. That means written word. Yeah, the, all Scripture, the written word of God, is breathed out and will equip you for every good work. This guy's claim on its face is that the Bible is not sufficient to teach you how to pray. That what Jesus needed two thousand years after the close of the canon was to have a guy die during a dental procedure. <laughs> <laughs> And come back and give us a more complete teaching regarding prayer. But Scripture says that the written word will equip us for every good work. And by the way, that would include prayer. <clears throat> we continue. And so that they don't get disappointed. But this, is a, this realm is, is in a slow mode to me. It's in a really slow. <laughs> now, I feel such a strong 
presence of God as we're yeah, total manipulation. Yeah, I feel nothing, nothing. Speaking right now, uh, let's just kind of uh, jump into it. What do we do? What's the first thing we should do to get our pray- prayers answered? Yeah, first thing. For, well, I mean, since the Bible doesn't give us a complete picture of what it is we need to do in order to have our prayers answered, since you were sent back after your you died on in the dentist chair, um, <laughs> tell us what God told you regarding what we need to do to have our prayers answered. The time um, when Jesus was talking to me, said he he wanted me to to come back and tell people to be aware that their prayers will be answered, but they've got to get on the same page as him. Mm -hmm. What page is he on? 10? Page 87? What does it mean to get on the same page as Jesus? Could you be more specific, please? Because at this point, I mean, I'm desperate. I need my prayers answered. And I don't know what you mean by getting on the same page as Jesus. And so he has a command about him. And when he would talk, he would say, this is the way it is. And, um, you know, we've had meetings without you. Uh, we don't include you in on, on the planning part of it. But So Jesus said that they've had meetings without you. I've never once been <laughs> invited to a meeting where any member of the Trinity was present while discussing plans for me. Is this normal for you? Are you invited to your planning meetings? This is the way it is, and if you will get on the same page, then you're going to have all your prayers answered. Everything that you desire when you pray, if you'll believe, you shall receive it. If you're on the same page. Okay. He told me. No, he he didn't tell you that at all. You made it up. You said that uh, uh, we have to pray ourselves into our answer. What is that? We have to pray ourselves into our answer. Well, I saw, Sid, that the Spirit of God was standing by to coach us. And so he was there to tell us exactly what to say, what to pray for, and that he would give us in advance glimpses of the future. And so he was there to help us pray into our future. You see, Jesus told me... He he was there to help us to pray into our future. How, How does one pray into one's future? I mean... What does this sentence mean? I'm sitting here right now looking at your future because it's my now. But it's your future. But you can see it now if you will stay with me in the secret place. (laughs) Here comes the secret place again. Man, I don't know where the secret place is because every time I ask somebody, hey, where's the secret place? They say, can't tell you. It's a secret. So, So you're saying I can't have my prayers answered Until somebody, like, divulges the secret and tells me where the secret place is. That's something that we've heard, the secret place. Yeah. But what exactly is it? How? Yeah, please. Now, note, as soon as he explains what exactly the secret place is, it will cease to be a secret place. Can we get there? And how can we stay there? I th- you look to me like you stay there. <laughs> right, yeah. You got secret place all over your face, man. Well, it's a safe place. Trust me, if you came back... It's your safe space. Got it. <laughs> the, secret spa- the secret place is a safe space. Just want to let you all know that. A place that's uh, not like heaven, you're going to find the, the closest place you can. And uh, to God, and that is right in the secret place. He showed me where it was. (laughs) So Jesus showed you where the secret place is. I mean, what on earth? Why is that audience sitting there thinking, oh, this is the best thing ever? They should be walking out going, this is Looney Tunes. I was amazed at how the cherubim are on each side of God and they cover him. And uh, he said, Kevin, if you'll stay right there in the secret place of the Most High, right there. Under- right there. So the secret place is where the cherry bim are. Yeah, spelled C-H-E-R-R-Y. <laughs> you get it. Okay, the cherry bim. Got it. 
my wings, which is the cherubim wings, then he said, all these things are yours. And if the, you'll stay in the secret place, which is where the cherubim are. The verses 9 through 16 go through in Psalms 91, go through those benefits. But he said, if you're not making the Most High your dwelling place, if you're not in the shadow of the Most High. Then so I've got to find God's shadow. That might have something to do with solving the mystery of the secret place in its location. These things, um, these goodies, he said, will, will, are not, not for you because you're not close enough to me. You were telling me. Right. So I, I got to get closer find the shadow near the cherry bim because that's where the secret place is uh-huh now let me just kind of cut to the quick here fast forward through the program to the commercial break and i think you can understand what's going on this guy doesn't make any sense he doesn't need to because he's got sid roth literally selling his merchandise and uh, so if you're confused by all this and you want answers, where is the secret place exactly? How do I find the shadow and the cherry bims and things like that? Well, <laughs> luckily, yeah, there's, there's, a, there's a resource available. It's not free, but uh, Sid Roth will uh, make this available to you and let you solve these mysteries for this amount. Call now and get Kevin Zadai's powerful brand new book, Praying from the Heavenly Realms. And yeah, I live on Earth. I pray from Earth. I don't know what it was. His two-part audio CD teaching, Getting Heaven's Attention, plus... <laughs> what an absurd name! I mean, seriously. When the disciples came to Jesus, Jesus, teach us to pray. Jesus did not go, all right, step one, make sure you have Heaven's Attention. You know, uh, because, you know... Hey! Hey, heaven! Can you see me? Can you hear me? And then when the when you can see God's finger pop out from the shadow part of the cherry bim place, then you know you can start praying. No, this is nonsense. By the way, in script <laughs> in scripture, it's not the one true God who has a problem with us getting us getting his attention. It's only idols. You think of Elijah on Mount Carmel. And there's the, there's the prophets of Baal. They are trying to get Baal's attention. Oh, Baal, answer us. And, you know, they're limping around the altar and stuff, cutting themselves. And, and what, I mean, literally, what does Elijah say? Shout louder, louder. You know, maybe your God's on a journey or maybe he's relieving himself in the small little room in your house. You know, it, it is relieved, by the way. And, yeah, it's it has that. <clears throat> that imagery. But uh, so it's not the one true God that you have to worry about. James says, the prayer of a righteous man availeth much. And all of us who are in Christ are clothed with the righteousness of Christ. So nowhere in Scripture are we told to first get God's attention, find the secret place in the shadow where the cherry bim are. This is just nonsense and absurdity on its face. This isn't Christian or biblical at all. Pointed heavenly soaking music CD, Destiny. Uh. Quick, grab Mr. Sponge! We got some heavenly soaking we got to do here. Exclusive for our rich Supernatural audience. Yours for a donation of $35. Shipping and handling is included. Ask for offer number 9518. You yeah, so for 35 bucks, you can get utter nonsense. and That'll help you get all of your prayers. And This is... Wow. Um, I think you get the point. So, before I engage in spontaneous combustion... As a result of this dumpster fire, let me go ahead and uh, turn that off. <sighs> so if um, if you'd like to see more of this kind of programming, uh, then please support us. Mm -hmm. And several of the ways you can support us. Number one, I mean, have you started listening to our podcast yet? Do you know that we actually do 10 plus hours a week of discernment work? at the Fighting for the Faith podcast. You can find it at fightingforthefaith.com. The link is below. You can support us financially by becoming a patron or a crew member. Details are below. Of course, another way you can support us is by sharing these videos with others to, you know, spread the word that if you're if hey, if you're following Sid Roth or the lady who thinks she has an owl anointing, yeah, you're being deceived. <laughs> I think you get the idea. 
So uh, support Fighting for the Faith, and until next time, may God richly bless you in the grace and mercy won by Jesus Christ and his vicarious death on the cross for all of your sins. Amen. 